So when I reviewed a DreamWorks sequel last week, I told you guys that I was going to wear a DreamWorks shirt today because last week I was wearing a Disney shirt while I was reviewing a DreamWorks movie. And I said I'd make it up to you guys by wearing a DreamWorks shirt. Uh, problem, I don't own a DreamWorks shirt, and I knew that when I made the promise. And to top it all off, I spent time with Kayla today, and she has a shirt of Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon, which is the sequel that I reviewed last week, and I could have asked her, but I didn't even think about it when I was hanging out today. <laughs> Missed opportunity. I do have a poster of Trolls, DreamWorks Trolls. Does that, does that count? No? Maybe? Alright, well, I'm going to review it anyway. <laughs> Welcome back to Sequels Month. It has been so much fun. Uh, I am going to be reviewing one of my favorite sequels, actually, of Disney. Uh, some of the Disney sequels were hit or miss, and I did mention how last week some of them have the cliches. And this one does have some cliches that the Disney sequels went down, but not as bad. And I actually really enjoyed the plot. I really enjoyed the story and the music. Oh my gosh. Some of the sequels had music that was like, what is this compared to the original? The music in this is so good. And I'm actually going to make this kind of a musical review. Not too much of one, uh, but I am going to sing some the songs, a bit of each song, so you can kind of get a little tidbit if you haven't seen the movie. Um, yes, so I am reviewing Lion King 2 Simba's Pride, and this was recommended to me by the amazing Nebula Starlight. They are an amazing fanfic writer. Please check out their stuff. Not only are they working on original works, they are also amazing fans of Jack Septicai, who is one of my favorite gamers, and his ego arc that he has been doing. They have written things about the egos, they've written origins, they have just really good stuff and lore that is brilliant that I could never write. Like, it is so amazing, and I, every time they send something else out, I get so excited. Please check them out. I will provide a link for them below for their Tumblr. I highly recommend their stuff, just like all the others. So talented. I'm just getting my uh, lyrics all set up to make sure that I have everything correctly on here. <laughs> so sorry that I'm on my phone here. I know, so unprofessional, but you know, <laughs> none of you care. <laughs> um, I was going to ask Kayla to review this with me because she absolutely loves it, but she's going to take a little break from reviewing for a while. Uh, she just wants to kind of take a break from it. Uh, Supernatural season 13 kind of knocked her out of the park, and I don't blame her. That drained me, too. We both did not enjoy season 13. So she will not be joining me for um, the Supernatural reviews, and she is definitely supporting me every step of the way with the channel and me and Debbie will still be doing it and I will definitely be reviewing with Debbie every chance we get but this is one of her favorite sequels as well so I'll probably be bringing up some memories that I have of her uh, loving the movie so much as we go but you know if she was here she'd maybe talk about it <laughs> but she will be supporting me she did say she'd watch the video and cheer me on which is super awesome so thank you Kayla if you're watching this love you um uh, I hope I don't mess this up, Kayla. I'm kind of worried. <laughs> okay. So the movie begins kind of the same way as the first one. There is a birth of a child. It is this time Simba and Nala's daughter, Kiara, who is a great addition to the Disney generations. I, I really like Kiara. She's a, she's a fun character. She's a spirited girl. Very much Simba's daughter, who I think Simba's daughter would be. Uh, the movie begins with this gorgeous song. I mean, it, you know, The Circle of Life is a great way to begin a movie, which is so amazing. And there were a ton of animals that came to his, um, you know, birth. Uh, not as many <laughs> came to hers. Um, actually, I, I, like to, I like to laugh about how the, wild, the wildebeest came and they're thinking to themselves, Ooh, you know, we, we killed his dad. Uh, I mean, we didn't really kill his dad, but we did kind of trample him. We didn't stop when he was getting run over. Maybe we should have, we should have, we shouldn't be here. <laughs> and when, like, the sky parts and then we get to see Mufasa's face looking down at his granddaughter being all excited. It's like, it's him! Oh no! We killed him! <laughs> you know, they're like in two by two. It's like they stepped off the Noah's Ark and they, they got me. 
<laughs> budget. Anyways, uh, the song that is playing at the very beginning is He Lives in You, which was actually a song, according to Kayla, is actually a song that was played in the play of The Lion King. It's a, it's in the Broadway musical, but they, and they were going to put it in the movie in the first one, but they took it out and they put it in the second one, which I think is really cool. It's a really cool nod. Uh, it, it was played when, when Kayla went and saw it with Jeff, um, and her family. She's seen the play about three times. Maybe, have you seen it, Kayla, three times? I'm going to be talking to you through this whole thing because I expect that you're watching because you said you would. You promised. <laughs> Love you. Um, I think she's seen it three times and she said that it plays when Rafiki is talking to Simba and the sky parts and he sees Mufasa again for the first time. And it's absolutely amazing. And it's just as amazing in this. It's played during Nala Kiara's um, birth and I'll, I'll sing a little bit. Sorry, all of you. <laughs> it is 12.30 at night. 12.30 in the morning, and I am singing, so I apologize to all of you who are about to hear this 12.30 a.m. voice. <laughs> um, he lives in you. He lives in me. He watches over everything we see into the water. Into the truth in your reflection, he lives in you. That sounded awful. I'm so sorry, guys, <laughs> but that's just a little, little tune, tone deaf version of that song. It's a gorgeous song. Please listen to it. Uh, not with me singing it, anyways. Birth of Kiara. Then we go to the next timeline. Kiara is a little cublet, little cub, and uh, she she's very free free spirited, just like her daddy. She wants to go out. She wants to be in the world, but daddy's not as uh, adventurous as Mufasa allowed him to be originally. Mufasa used to take him places, and he used to like let him go out. He wasn't supposed to go certain places, and he did get in trouble for disobeying. But he was allowed to go places, and Simba's a little paranoid. He's a paranoid daddy. Which, personally, okay, so this is one gripe I have with the movie, and I and I know that this is something that I say a lot, but it felt a little out of character for Simba to be this protective. He wasn't as bad as Ariel in Little Mermaid 2, where she just, like, lied to her daughter and wouldn't tell her why she couldn't go in the water, and it was just really, really annoying, because that's what led to her daughter going in the water. But Simba's just a little paranoid, and he keeps having Timon and Pumbaa watch Kiara, which really annoys Kiara, although <laughs> I kind of feel like... If you're going to be a paranoid dad, you're going to put someone in charge to, like, watch your kid. <laughs> Timon and Pumbaa aren't the worst bodyguards. I mean, they're, they're actually the worst bodyguards. So if Kiara wants to be independent and be on her own, I mean, Timon and Pumbaa are the perfect bodyguards for that because they're not paying attention to her at all. <laughs> She's able to wander off pretty dang easily <laughs> with them around. So, you know, that, that's where I stand on that. But Nala's trying to tell him to lighten up and chill and everything, but she he just continues to, to freak out about things. Because, you know, he's a daddy, and he's just, you know, she's his little girl, and, you know. Uh, but she wants to go off, and she goes off, and Timon and Pumbaa are lecturing her about, you know, getting lost and all that stuff, and she gets lost. <laughs> she Well, she wanders off, and she runs into a cub, and... I'm not sure, okay, so this is where things get kind of interesting with the story, but uh, this cub is from another pride, a separated pride, because what happens in this new one is that in the, the first one, apparently, according to this story, uh, Scar had a select few of, uh, what's the word, um, hat... I mean, pride, but, like, um, I mean, lionesses, I mean, it was all lionesses who followed him, and, and he even had, like, one particular who was, like, his, his girl, his, his groupie lady, <laughs> who really looked up to him and, like, saw herself as being the future queen, you know, like, she daydreamed about them being together and stuff. I mean, what, what he felt about her, I don't know. Uh, he never talked about her. <laughs> so, you know, uh, but she had a son named Kovu, and that is the cub that 
Kiara runs into, and the two of them are absolutely adorable together, just really funny, like, instant hit-off, and he, there's this cute little moment between them that plays later where Kiara is acting like, arr, arr, and Kovu's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Which I think is adorable, and she's like, you know, my father said never to trust anyone that lives past the Pride Lands or something like that. I think I'm just quoting. Kayla, help me. Um, she has the movie practically memorized. I do not. Um, but, uh, you know, he he basically befriends her pretty quickly because they're they're just friend they're just cubs. And again, you know, Simba comes in and he's all defensive, like, oh, this cub is from this Pride. And I'm like, Simba. Dude, like, you were raised by Timon and Pumbaa, and t they taught you to eat bugs. I mean, you can't judge. <laughs> He's just a tiny little cublet. And then, like, the cub's mom shows up, and she's evil. Her name is Zira. Zira? Yeah, I think it's Zira. She is, like, hilariously evil. Like, she's got way much, too much time on her hands. She's so funny. <laughs> uh, but she takes um, Kobu back to her little den with, um, her son and daughter, um, Nuke, who is the oldest, and he's always getting attacked by termites, <laughs> and N Natali? I think it's Vitali, Vitali, and she is the middle child, and then there's Kovu, but Kovu actually, like, was taken in by Scar, according to this story. He wasn't his dad. He was just taken in by him, which begs, like, okay, who was his dad? Because there are no other males. And I know that behind the scenes, the creators said that the reason why Kovu couldn't be his son is because that would make Kovu and Kiara cousins. Slight problem with that. Um... Well, first of all, I don't think they would be cousins because Scar is is his uncle. The uncle's son would be uncle's son. So the nephew's daughter. They'd be related in some way. But Simba and Nala were cousins. I mean, Mufasa and Scar are the only males in the pride. So I don't know if they mean... If you want to complain about incest nowadays and incest shipping, I mean, Simba and Nala were practically related, and I didn't see that affecting them any. So I kind of feel like they should have just allowed Scar to be his dad, because this just made no sense. But I think they also kind of wanted it that he wasn't, I don't know, it was kind of confusing that, like, okay, who's your dad? Because we kind of need to know this. Can we get a Lion King 3, please? <laughs> Where did these males go? Did they get eaten by the hyenas <laughs> once, once Scar became ruler? <laughs> they didn't see no males around. But, you know, Zero wants Kovu to be king even though Nuke's older. But Nuke's kind of stupid, so, you know. And then, like, I really love the relationship between Nuke and it's Vitali and um, Kovu because you can kind of see, like, a closeness. Like, Nuke's jealous of Kovu, but you also kind of see a closeness because Vitali's, like, excited when Kovu comes back and they're playing. And then Zira's, like, yelling at Nuke, like, you were supposed to be watching him, which, once again, we don't hire the best babysitters in this movie. <laughs> and Nuke's, like, freaking out because, like, she's all mad at him. And... Kovu stands up for him. He's like, you know, it wasn't his fault. I went off on my own. And then she, like, gets on Kovu. Like, can no one be allowed to play? <laughs> um, but she's, like, convincing Kovu that they're evil and everything. But then she realizes that he befriended Kiara, who is the princess. And then she has this plot. And that brings up her song, <sighs> suck at this song so much. And I know I missed another song. I'll get to that one in a minute because I want to, I have a story about that one. But, um, she, you know, she, she comes up with an idea and it's kind of funny because she literally says to her, her, her son, like, I can see it now, you becoming king and everything. Kobe's like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like, he doesn't. Like, her plans aren't working out very well, like, at all. It backfires immensely, but, like, it, he doesn't want to be king. Like, don't make him become king if he doesn't want to be king. Like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I have a, that gnat. In case you guys remember the gnat that, like, I yelled at today in um, Supernatural. I told you guys how gnats bite eyes if they get too close. Yeah. 
he came back at me. He, uh, he got vengeance. <laughs> Major vengeance after, after the camera turned off. He didn't want to do it in public because he didn't want this to be a violent channel, but, yeah. He wouldn't leave me alone. I finally had to put him out of his misery. Or my misery. <laughs> I was like, get away. <laughs> he was a, he was an anti- Anyways, no. Uh, yeah, but now I have, like, a little sty in my eye, which, like, is really itchy, so I apologize, um, for any of you that it grosses out when people touch their eyes and, and do these things. So sorry. I washed my hands before I did that, because I knew I was going to be doing that a few times. Uh, but anyway, so she starts, like, telling him to, like, go to sleep, and she starts singing a lullaby, and this lullaby is creepy. Like, I would not want to go to sleep to this lullaby. Honestly, if my mom was, like wanting to sing this song to me, I would go to sleep just to pretend to be asleep. Like, okay, I'm asleep now, so you can stop singing. <laughs> but she doesn't stop singing. Like, she only sings, like, one scene to Kovu, and then he's just, like, asleep. Asleep, I guess. And, and then she goes off and, like, sings, and it's, like, the image in my head of, like, my mom singing me lullabies. So my mom used to sing lullabies to me, or, like, play songs and then sing them to me that I absolutely loved. And like, the image in my head is, like, she she sings me a little lullaby, like maybe one tune, and then she goes out there and there's a whole chorus waiting for her to sing more of the song. <laughs> it's kind of funny, because I feel like Kobu's like, I'm trying to sleep, Mom, you're getting louder with that lullaby. <laughs> but I'll sing a little bit of... This is going to sound awful, because I, I don't remember, like, exactly how this tune goes. I listened to it and tried so much, but... Usually the villain song is my favorite song. Like, a lot of times the villain song is the best song of the movie, this is the weakest one for me. Like, this is not my favorite song, which is weird. I usually love the villain song, but this is like... Hmm. Sleep, my little Kovu, let your dreams take wing. One day when you're big and strong, you will be a king. That's all I'm singing, because that, that song gives me nightmares. <laughs> Anyways, that's the only part she sings though, and then it goes to sleep, so, you know, I'm, I'm Kobu, like, only hearing that part, I think. Um, also, his bed doesn't look very comfortable, but, like, you know, that's just me. Okay, so her song goes, like, you know, how she's gonna get revenge, and she's gonna use it to get Kobu, uh, like, they're gonna kill Simba, and they're gonna put Kobu on the throne by luring him into, you know, marrying Kiara. Not marrying Kiara, but, like, being close to Kiara, which I feel like, why don't you just try and, like convince Simba to let him marry Kiara, then the two can unite, but she doesn't want that. She wants to kill Simba, so, you know, that's just her, her plan, and he would not go with it anyway, because he doesn't like Kobu. Um, but I think, uh, one, one thing, in case you guys have not figured it out yet, what the pattern is here, is that, um, the original movie, The Lion King, was based off of Hamlet, uh, the Hamlet story. Nephew knows somehow that the uncle killed his father, the ghost is driving him crazy, and the uncle marries the mother, and the the uncle rules the kingdom, and the nephew should be king, and, and you know, the rivalry. Um, Scar doesn't marry, uh, Nef Nefar- Sorry? Kayla, what's her name? I, don't, I forgot the name of the, the mom. Zoravi? Zoravi. I don't remember her name. Um, but, so that's Hamlet. The sequel is Romeo and Juliet, which I thought was cool. Again, you can tell that these guys were not making this movie like a cash grab. They were making it because they really put a lot of heart and soul into this movie. And, and you can definitely feel the love with, like, turning it into... Romeo and Juliet, which I think is really, really cute. Uh, they they are star-crossed lovers that cannot be together because they are, you know, they're enemies. And I think that's really cool. And and they were kind of technically relatives in Romeo and Juliet, so I, I thought that was really awesome. So after that really creepy song, well, actually not after that really creepy song, before that really creepy song, um, <clears throat> Kiara and Simba have a father-daughter moment that's really sweet, but it's basically just kind of telling her about, like, how we are one, it is basically. And then he sings this awesome song called We Are One. And fun story, Kayla got to sing We Are One at school when we went to middle school together. Um, she had a really fun choir teacher. My choir teacher was fun, but she was obsessed with the Beatles. 
So we were singing the, all the Beatles songs, which is fine. The Beatles are cool and all, but it wasn't a much variety. Kayla got to sing a lot of the cool stuff. We were forced to watch Yellow Submarine. That was an acid trip. I've seen worse now, but that, that movie was... <sighs> there, are, there are some haunts that still haunt my dreams because of that movie. It's a strange movie. But Kayla got to sing We Are One. She also got to sing Kryptonite. Not bitter. No. <laughs> um, so they sung We Are One. And it was really fun to watch her, her sing it. She was so excited that she got to because she really, really loved the movie. So I was so happy for her that she got to do that. So uh, this is my favorite part of the song that I'm going to sing. I apologize again, guys. 12.30 in the morning. Even those who are gone are with us as we go on. Your journey has only begun. Tears of pain, tears of joy, one thing nothing can destroy. Is our pride deep inside, we are one. It's a really fun song. I love that song. And, and you know what, it's a really cool moment between the, the father and daughter. Like, there is a bond between them. It's it's not like she doesn't get along with them, he doesn't understand her. It's not the stereotype, but it's still the, still the niche that Disney sequels had of making the, pro, the protagonist of the first one the antagonistic parent in the second one. Found it unnecessary, but I kind of get he is supposed to be the monarch that doesn't approve of the Romeo character, so you know, you kind of have to have that. But there were just a few times where I feel like Simba wouldn't get that defensive. Um, this part, it really felt like Simba and Kiara, like a father and a daughter. That was really, really sweet. It was a really cool moment of just like, you know, she is going to rule the kingdom when she gets older because. I don't know what's going on down on Disney Channel, but she does not have a brother in this movie. I don't quite know what's going on with the Kimba thing. Is he Kimba? I didn't even look into that. Um, yeah, there's no little brother. There's no older brother. There's no brother in this one. And I don't even know how that's explained. If any of you watched the, the show with uh, Kimba... Oh, not his name. <laughs> but if any of you have watched it, let me know, like, what exactly was going on there. If Disney was just wanting to have a little fun and didn't remember its own movie, or if they actually added to canon. I don't know. Because Kiara's an only child in this one. <laughs> so it moves on from there to years later again. Um, kind of the same way as, as the movement of the Lion King. Kiara is now uh, technically a teenager, or, well, you know, grown up. And it's her coming out party, her quinceanera, if you will. Well, not quinceanera, but her coming out. And uh, her her mission, or one of the things she gets to do, is she gets to go on her first hunt. And she's very excited, and she's coming up to her daddy, and she's like, you know, you promised I could do this on my own, remember? And he's like, yeah! Oh, totally and he's like crossing his paws behind his little tail because he immediately tells Timon and Pumbaa you know keep an eye on her and I'm like again I feel like he's not as protective as he could be if he sent like a whole crew or something because Timon and Pumbaa you know you blink they blink and she could be like halfway across the pride lands <laughs> um I also do love that Kiara is voiced by Nev Campbell who is one of my favorite final girls of the horror movie franchise. She is Sydney in Scream, so I love that because Kiara is very much like a survival girl. Um, she's very tough. She's not as rebellious as some of the characters of the other movies. Melody, for example, with um, the Little Mermaid or Scamp, Skip in the Lion, Lady and the Tramp too. Again, another one of those, like, I'm going to lie to my kid in order to keep them safe, which actually just ends up putting them in the danger that I didn't want. Simba's not actually lying to Kiara, which I definitely appreciate, but because he, well, he did lie. He said he wouldn't send anyone, and then he did, and then she's like, well, I'm leaving now. I'm going to go away from the Pride Lands. I'm going to go hunt somewhere, which I'm like, I don't feel like that's the best idea, Kiara. I feel like you should maybe just go home or just hunt. 
and just let, you know, Timon and Pumbaa chase an ant or something. Then go home and be like, Dad, you promised me. Because then you would have, like, a chance to prove him wrong. And instead you kind of proved him right by wandering off. So that doesn't put you in a very good position. But anyways, plot line. Um, while she's running off, uh, Nuke and Vitali are setting fire to that little area so that she's trapped. And it has my favorite quote, and it was Nuke. He's like, Roosty toast the princess, Roosty toast the princess. And then his tail catches fire because he's backing up, and he's like, I can't stop. <laughs> okay, I see why he can't be king. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see why uh, Scar chose Kobu instead. <laughs> I took one look at Nuke and was like, ooh. Wow, okay, nope. <laughs> um, so, plan, uh, Kiara gets in danger, Kovu saves her, he goes along with the plan, and uh, she's actually, he's actually able to help her remember who he is by the same type of, you know, her growling at him, him going, what are you doing? And she and is like, oh, Kovu! And she's excited to see him again because she remembers him. He's a memorable guy, especially since he's voiced by Jason Marsden, who is such an awesome voice actor. He's Max in the Goof True Goofy movie. Max in the Goofy movie one and two. He is um, Haru in Hakuharu Hakuharu in um, Spirited Away. Uh, he's in tons of stuff. His voice is everywhere, and it's so awesome. And he's Kobu, and I love him. Kobu and Nev Kimball, uh, Nev Kimball and Jason Merson have great voice chemistry in this movie. Um, so just when they're about to have a good moment, Sema shows up, and Kobu's like, you know, I saved her, and, you know, I was just wanting to join you guys. I've left my pride, and Sema's like, <laughs> No. <laughs> and Nala's like, well, he kind of saved your daughter's life, so I, you don't really get to say no to him. So he lets him come to the cave, but he won't let him sleep in the cave because he can be the only male in the cave, I guess. I don't know. I, he's not allowed to see what goes on in there. Uh, no, he's all like, no, Kubu, you can't. No, he just kind of growls at him and is like, no, sleep over there. So then he and Kiara have a cute, funny, like, banter outside where they're kind of chatting, and as the movie progresses, um, they start to fall in love, and you actually do believe it. It is not like the, I met you in the woods, and I walked with you once upon a dream, and now suddenly we're in love type thing. They're actually spending time together, and it's starting to look really cute. Although Rafiki kind of figured it out right away, because Mufasa's spirit is telling Rafiki, like, yeah, these two. My granddaughter needs to be with this guy. <laughs> like, I am shipping for them because my son's being an idiot in this movie. <laughs> Mufasa's, like, literally his day job is just watching everybody. <laughs> Rafiki's, like... I love what Rafiki says, because he's like, you, like you, because you put it under the clouds, <laughs> and everything, like, you, you're, you're, you're insane, and, um, he, you know, Mufas is like, no, no, this is, this is gonna work, and so Rafiki starts playing matchmaker with, uh, Kobu and Kiara, and there is a song, and I forgot how it goes, Kayla, help me. Um, it's just kind of not, I mean, it's not that it's not memorable, it's just that I don't, I don't remember the song, so sorry guys. Um, Upendi is, is what it's called, which means love, I think. Paradise. Love the way you live. I only, I only remember one part. <laughs> I don't remember that song. I'm so sick. It. It's just a funny, cute song. And um, he sings it to convince Kovu and Kiara that they like each other. And it's really cute and funny. Um, and then eventually Simba starts to kind of want to get to know Kovu. And he kind of starts to learn his story. And he starts to feel bad for him. And that, like, you know, he was raised by Scar. Tough luck. Man, that sucks. 
but also that, like, he never really wanted this. And it's true, he never did, and he is starting to hesitate. Like, at first he was joining in on the plan to kill Simba, and there was this one moment where he almost did, and then Kiara, like, jumped him and, like, was playing around. And, and, and falling in love with Kiara definitely changed his mind, but also just Kobe was like, he thought this was the right thing to do. He thought that Simba was the enemy. But then he's starting to, like, well, I kind of wish he had bonded more with Simba, because I, like, I, in perspective, Kobe's like, why do I have to like this guy? Like, he's kind of a jerk in this one. <laughs> but, like, he, he's bonding with Kiara. He can't kill his father-in-law. <laughs> and then he starts to like Simba. He starts to see what a good king he is. And he says, like, Simba actually lets him go in the cave. And Vitaly's watching, and she's thinking, all right, strike, strike, strike. And he doesn't. And she's like, what the heck? And so she goes back and tells her mom. And, and you know, mama lips out. Mama dearest <laughs> flips out. And so they decide they're going to take matters into their own hands. They're going to kill Simba. The next morning, Simba takes, um, Kobu <laughs> to somewhere. Uh, I think they took him to where Mufasa died. Actually, I don't remember where he took him. I never pay attention to this part. I mean, he's basically just kind of, like, telling him about the responsibility of being king and all that stuff. I don't remember exactly everything. Because I'm not paying attention at this moment. Kayla's paying attention. I was not. I'm too busy thinking, oh, no, here it comes. Here's the bad part. Here's the bad part. Because, like, whenever the bad part's about to come, I can never concentrate. So I'm really sorry. I don't know what they were talking about. But it leads to the moment that has to happen. The lie reveal of, of sorts. And, um, oh, it's really, really bad. I mean, it's just really bad, guys. Because not bad, like, badly written. It's really well written. But you just feel so bad for everyone in this scene. Except for Zuri. I could care less about her. Um, but basically, they trap Scar, or Simba. And then, you know, it's revealed by Zuri that Kovu was supposed to kill Simba, but Kovu instead wants to help Simba instead of kill him. And so Roach is like, oh, I'll do it. And then he gets caught in the trap that they set and he actually dies. Roach dies. But before he dies, Zuri is all like, oh, my baby. Like, she actually is like my son and Ian he's just like I just wanted to make you proud mom and she's like no it's okay honey and then he dies and it's really 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 sad so Kofu's like in a rock and a hard place like Zuri's super mad at him like she wants to kill him now practically she hates Kovu for not wanting to do this and so Kovu leaves and goes work with Simba which at this point I feel like come on Simba he saved your life like I know, he tried to kill you and everything, but you were kind of being a douche. I mean, he was trying here, and he actually did save your life, and I feel like at that point, you could be a little more understanding to the whole situation, but no, Simba has to be all like, er, you betrayed us, and everything. Thank goodness Kiara is actually, like, he he was being, you know, used. Like, can we just, like, hear him out, please? Can we reconsider? But no, Simba has to, like banish him and all the animals none of them have ever done something stupid like the wildebeest like they get to judge i know i'm blaming the wildebeest when that's actually scar <laughs> i'm just saying they've all done something they're not proud of and they sing a song to like banish him and as he's being banished they're they're singing this song and and uh it's called Deception, disgrace, which I still sing every time I hear the words deception, disgrace. <laughs> and he's got like a mark on his face, and like there's a part they said like evil is clear on this, there's a scar on his face or something. I don't know where I got that scar. Maybe it's Zuri. Zuri's already, kind of crazy. Um, but they sing this song, and it's actually a really pretty song, even though it's a really sad song because of the whole situation. I can't find it. I'm gonna look it up. Mr. Beast, we missed your phone. Making me look bad. Uh, deception. Okay, so, all the, it's called Not One of Us. Not It's not called Deception Disgrace. It's called Not One of Us. And I love this song. It's just really, really sad. Um, here we go. Let's see if I can find a good part to sing. 
thing. Um, uh, he is not one of us. He has never been one of us. He is not part of us, not our kind. Someone once lied to us, now we're not so blind, for we knew he would do what he's done, and we know that he'll never be one of us. Deception! scar on his face. Deception! Disgraced! He asked for trouble the moment he came. I so sang that wrong. I'm so sorry, guys. Kayla's probably, like, smacking her head right now, and if she's not dead and rolling in her grave, she's like, wow, that sounded awful. <laughs> sorry, guys one more song um so after that he's banished and then Kiara is like dad no and Simba's like no you're not allowed to ever see him again and I'm like oh yeah that's gonna work out because if we've seen anything about Kiara is that she stays put no she runs off she's like I'm gonna be with Kovu I love him and she goes looking for him and she can't find him at first and she's like really really sad and then she finds him and it's really really sad sweet and it's this really beautiful song called love will find a way that is so pretty and i feel really bad butchering it but yeah here i go singing this one it's this beautiful love ballad honestly i like it better than can you feel the love tonight <laughs> i sing it more than can you feel the love tonight that's the thing i sing some of these songs more than i sing the original songs that's another thing about this sequel that just really grabs me but I like the music better, I hate to say. Um, hold up. Love will find a way. I actually have it memorized, but I don't feel comfortable not singing without the phone in front of me because I don't know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, here's the tune. I know love will find a way Anywhere I go, I'm home If you are there beside me Like dark turning into day Somehow we'll come through Now that I've found you Love will find a way. Absolutely love that song. It was so pretty. Uh, they sing it together, which is like so pretty. Like she sings the first part, he sings the second part, and I would hope that it is actually Jason Marsden who sang it. I'll look into that later because he's a really good singer, so I feel like we should let him sing. <laughs> um, anyways. So they're together, they're happy, but then Kovu's like, ooh, we gotta go back because my mom's gonna totally try to kill your dad, and Kira's like, yeah, we gotta stop this, we gotta stop this, this, this whole thing is ridiculous, there shouldn't be a rivalry, and a lot of fans feel the same way, they're like, where, where is this <laughs> going, when did this happen, um, but they decide that Zuri gets her group of girls together, and... Simba's got his pride of lionesses together that he has trained well in combat, I guess. And they start going at it. They're having this fight. Um, Nala's fighting Vitali, who Nala knows the name of everybody, by the way. Like, she totally knew Vitali. She totally knew Zuri. I was like, wow, Nala, you really do your research on everybody. Just, wow. Interesting. <laughs> she totally knows everyone's name. Um... And then they're fighting, and then, like, Kiara's trying to stop the fight. And so Kiara is blocking the way of one pack. Kovu is blocking the other. They're trying to talk to him. She's able to convince Simba, like, what's the difference between them and us? 
And my mom always used to joke that, like, their color was different. Like, she's like, well, they're looking kind of haggardy, and they're kind of purplish, <laughs> you know? But that's just um, a joke, but that's just something my mom and I love to do. Uh, but Simba realizes he's just being an idiot, and he stops. He realizes it needs to stop. Zuri, uh-oh, now she wants to cue in the now. And even Vitaly is like, Mom, calm it down. Like, all Vitaly ever wanted to do is support Kovu. So when Kovu turns, he's just kind of like, oh, you know, I don't, I don't feel like this is the right thing. I mean, this guy Roach killed. Your vengeance quest and everything. Uh, did I just say Roach? I'm calling him the horse from Witcher now, Kayla. What the heck? Oh gosh, how many how many times have I called him Roach instead of Nuke? Can someone correct me on how many times I've been calling him Roach instead of Nuke? Oh my gosh. Oh, Kayla, why are you not here? Anyways, um, they got Nuke killed, which sucks. Um, so they are trying to get her to calm down. She ain't calming down. There's a storm coming. She starts flinging herself, and so Kiara fights her. And she's mostly trying to calm her down. They get thrown all over the place. And then, like, Zuri's, like, hanging from just kind of, like, the same way with Scar. Only Scar was like, you know, save me, save me, help me up, help me up. And, like, you know, Simba actually, you know, did in the in the first one and everything. Um, but in this one, she's like, you know, give me your hand, you know, get, or paw. <laughs> and Zuri's like, yeah. like, she's actually like, you know, she's trying to kill her. So she dies because she doesn't want help and she she falls and dies and then Kiara feels like she's responsible and they're like, nah, that wasn't your fault, sweetie. Like, she was an idiot. <laughs> we don't quite understand her motive. Never will. Um, so they all unite, Kovu and Kiara marry. And the Mufasa in the sky is happy that he brought that all together. It's his own little fan fiction <laughs> that his his uh, his matchmaking service worked. <laughs> so that was The Lion King 2. If any of you haven't seen it because you're a little hesitant to watch the Disney sequels, don't blame me about the Disney sequels. Some of them are kind of cringy. And I know I keep going on about um, The Little Mermaid 2 because that one, it, I actually really like that one, like music-wise but man that plot uh but Lion King 2 is actually really good I mean it's not the worst it's it's pretty good it's a fun one it's memorable from my childhood and on it's it's a blast uh great voice cast awesome music and just just really good animation they didn't change up the animation like some sequels do they actually made it even better so it's it's still really good it's a fun one and Nebula Starlight, thank you so much for recommending it. Kayla, thank you so much for supporting me. Um, I'm so sorry for my music. Oh, gosh, guys, I'm so sorry for my singing. It's 12.30 in the morning. Now going on one. Um, but I just really appreciate all your guys' support. You are all so amazing. I'll see you again uh, tomorrow for Rowena Week for uh, day two and also for the next sequel. Love you guys. Bye.